If you are clapping for yourself, clap. Thank you very much. All our leaders and all the people that have spoken were said virtually everything we need to hear. Just one final word. And the Lord will send us forth, will be change makers, looking forth, looking forward, not looking back. Already you are a change maker. The spirit of the change maker, the mindset of the change maker, the inward energy of the change maker is already in you. You'll make a change in the world in which we live. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Great, mighty God. Lord, we pray your might, your power, your vision, and this great mission, your right on the table of every heart. And Lord, send us forth with courage, with confidence, with commitment, and watch you have made us for to change our world for the better will be done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. As I said very briefly, we're going to just highlight. Now that we have heard all we have heard, and now that we have the strength, the vision, the power, how do I go on? How do I do what needs to be done? I'm talking on promises in the past of a strategic change maker. As a change maker, it's not standing still. It's not folding his hand. It's not tying his leg. He is moving. He is moving in a path. And it must be a path of strategy. When we talk of strategy, we're talking of planning. We're talking of wisdom. We're talking of asking questions. Will this work? Will that work? I know where I'm going. I know what I need to do. But the strategy, the methodology, and the path that takes us there, and the promises the Lord had giving us. And let me bring the story of Paul the Apostle in Philippians chapter 3. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. You would have thought a man like this, with everything he had done, he had reached his final point. He said, yet yeah, no. He said, I have not finished. He said, but this one Thing I do. This one thing I do. It says, if I travel, there's one thing that guides me, that propels me. If I talk, if I preach, there is one thing that propels me. If I interact with people of my height, with people not having my heart, with people taller than myself, he said, one thing, one thing guides me. This one thing I do. If I have money, and I'm thinking of how to spend the money, he says, this one thing guides me. Am I healthy? Am I strong? And do I still have a mind to think? And I have the strength to move. He said, one thing, guide me. He says, this one thing I do. Then he said, forgetting those things that are behind. A lot of things behind. Good, bad, profit, progress, 
persecution, pain, pleasure, all that. The pain and the pleasure of the past. The progress and the setback of the past. It says, forgetting those things that are behind. It says, I reach forth. That's the point. One thing, reaching forth. One thing, uh, reaching forth. It says, reaching forth unto those things that are before. As you stand, as you see it, a lot of things behind you, history behind you. But he says, I'm not looking at that. That is gone. On record, the good things, that is gone. On record. But what do I do for the rest of this day? For the rest of this week? For the rest of this year? For the rest of my life? He says, that is what I think about that is a determined, dedicated change maker. It tells us in verse 14, it says in verse 14, I press forward. I could have pressed backward. I could allow the stress, the distress, the challenge, and the six surround. I could allow that to push me back and to press me back and then to fall on my back. But he said, no, no. I press toward the mark. That is a person that has a particular ideal, destination in mind. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling. High calling of God in Christ. Then he tells us in verse 16. In verse 16, he now says, Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained. It's not, he said, I, I, I. Then he understands. He takes all of us to join hands together. It takes all of us to have the insight together. He then said, all of us now, where to? We have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. He says, don't think I, Paul, I'm special. I'm made for that. I could do that because he will say, you know, this and that in the past. What do you think? That's what he will do. Given his constitution, that's what he will do. Given his strength, his power, that's what he will do. Given the nature of this Paul, untiring, that's what he will do. But who am I? He said, don't say, who am I? You are significant. I am significant. Are you there? Say it now. Then he said, let us walk by the same rule. And let us mind the same thing. The three things I want to bring to your attention on the change maker. Number one is the purpose and the vision of a pioneering change maker. Number two is the priority and the virtue of a progressing change model. Number three is the proficiency and visibility of a proof producing change mentor. You, you must produce the fruit. I'm a change maker. Where is the fruit? Where is the product? What is the outcome? Number one. Number one, we're talking of the purpose and the vision of a pioneering change maker. Well, we have spoken about Paul. Let me talk about another person. You know, when you get to a situation where there is pollution, where there is corruption, where everything is upside down, 
Well, the people that say yes, what comes out is no. And when the path is going the path of destruction, and you come there, Daniel came to Babylon by no plan of his. And they carried him along with others to Babylon. And then he got there. He got there as a slave. He got there as a captive. He got there as a person that had no value. Babylon put no value on Daniel and all the rest of them. He got there as a man with no voice. Who wants to hear the captive? He got there as a worthless slave to serve wherever they put him. And maybe up till now, you don't have any voice. Now you are going to have a voice. Amen. You will speak out in society. Amen. Maybe you came and there was no value. Only your wife valued you, your children valued you, your people valued you, but the rest of the people, they didn't even know your name. Don't worry, your time has come. Yeah. And so eventually, when Daniel got there, he had one sin going for him. And you have one sin going for you. We read in Daniel chapter 1, we're looking at verse 8. It says, and Daniel, but Daniel purposed in his heart. That's the secret. That is the secret. Nobody can make your life useless if you have a purpose in your heart. Nobody can silence you if you have a purpose in your heart. And you have a vision, a vision. And here, the Lord has already painted the vision in our heart. And you say, I'm going to be a go-getter. It will be done. It will be done. But with the vision that we have, the plan we have, and the picture of going to achieve and being a change maker and a pioneering change maker. Nobody ever thought of changing this in our community. Nobody ever thought of going from negative to positive in our community like a herd of sheep who have been going sluggishly in one direction until somebody there will stand up. Where is he? I said, where are you? <laughs> stand up and let me see how you stand. Oh, wonderful. We have such a mighty army in the house. A change has come in our nation. God bless you. Can see now where we start, the purpose of heart. Purpose of heart. Anything you do now, here is the purpose. Here is the reason. And here is the foundation of what I'm doing and why I'm doing that. But Daniel proposed in his heart no consultation. Can I do it? He proposed in his heart. Will it work? He proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Think about that. You know, sometimes you want to do something, we're changing the system. And then the people in the system, they have a lot of money, and they think everybody is looking for money. They think money will change everyone, but not Daniel, not you. And so, he's rising up, listening to him. He's talking about change. He's talking about moving us, the community, and the country in the right direction. Corruption over. You're not fighting any man. You're fighting corruption. 
pollution over. You are not fighting any minister, any commissioner. You are fighting the pollution. Darkness over. You are not fighting any man of authority there. You are fighting the darkness. And, and so, those in charge, you can't name anyone, but there are people who are behind corruption, pollution, darkness. They spot you out. Oh, yes, I think you must have attended the Change Makers Conference. If they asked you, did you attend? What do you say? Yes. Of course, of course, yes. Did you come out with any plan, any purpose? Yes. What do you say? Yes. Of course, yes. Are you going to start now? Yes. What do you say? Yes. yes. And then is one of them. And they bring something they think everybody will fall for. And they put it in a bag and they say, Sir, the master and the originator and the initiator of corruption said, we should give you this. What do you do? No. I said, what do you do? No. Once you eat the dainty meal coming from the center of corruption, you are gone. Don't call yourself a change maker anymore. You are bought over. But Daniel said, I purpose in my heart that I will not defile myself with the defilement, the portion of the king's meat, no, with the wine which he drank. They think, if I drink that wine, it will get into my head, it will get into my mind, and I will forget the decisions I made as a change maker. And Daniel said, no. And my partner in progress there, you say, no. Therefore, he requested of the priests, of the eunuchs, that he might not defile himself. We're going out of here with the vision of change, with the purpose of change, and without compromising our stand with anyone, anywhere, for any reason, that change will take place. If you have time to read the book of Daniel, chapter 1, almost unknown, chapter 2. It didn't take long. He came to the limelight. You are coming to the limelight. <laughs> chapter 3, it, there were others with him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And even though Daniel had passed his own test, it now remains the others. You are the center there, a change maker. And then the person by your side, the person by the other side, the person behind you there, the three of them, you are not alone. They are all the other three, by this side, by this side, by that side, we are together. Amen. We are together. Amen. And so, Nebuchadnezzar, the master of corruption, call them, I heard. But you want to be a change maker. This system has been here for centuries. Now, when you hear the music coming, not the kind of music we play here, it's another kind of music. When you hear that music, if you fall down and you worship and you do watch the Babylonian corrupted company, once done, all right. If you don't, we'll cast you into the furnace of fire. He said, King, we know you have authority, 
but we have somebody higher than the highest. You have someone omnipotent, omniscient, all powerful, creator, the one that no one can receive, higher than the highest, is on your side. Is God on the side of corruption? Is God on the side of pollution? Is God on the side of destroying the world he has made? No, he is not on their side, he's on your side. Amen. To cut a long story short, you know, sometimes we make a short story long, but we should make a long story short today. Now, they bound them up and they cast them into the fire. They, they have their fire, they have their funnies, but they came out of that funnies. And no matter where they put you, you will come out. Yeah. The one who is higher than the highest will protect you. Yeah. Will preserve your life. He knows what he created you for. And he has revealed that to you. It will be done. Yeah. Chapter 4 of Daniel. They got into a problem. They called Daniel again. Chapter 5. They had a problem. The son of the king. Had a problem, they called Daniel again. Chapter 6, some people said, This is enough. How can this man, when did he come? He's not even a person born in this place, and he's making such changes. And he decided to cast him into the lion's den. But he came out. Well, come out of their fire furnace. Will come out of their den of lions yeah. until we be the change, make the change that God has raised us up for. The point is, you focus on the purpose, you focus on the vision. We're out of every kind of captivity or den because we have the purpose and the vision. Of a pioneering change maker. Welcome. Amen. Welcome into the fold. Amen. We will do it together in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two here now. Number two, we're looking at the priority and virtue of a progressing change model. You're not just a change maker, you're a model. Other people too, they may lie in follow, and they'll be, they be thinking, I want to do this. But you know, in this community, in this place, it's a very difficult, challenging thing to champion anything good. They have the intention. They have the thinking. They have the desire. But they're thinking, no one can do this because... This one is entrenching that, entrenching that, entrenching that until you rise up. And you are not only a change maker, you become a change model. Amen. Give a better amen. amen. Then you have a priority. You know what priority is? There are three, four things to do. You look at this. It's important, but not urgent. You look at this, it's not important. It appears urgent. Then you look at this, this one is both important and urgent. That's where you put your priority on. Look at our country, look at what you can contribute. You can look at what you can make of all your talents, of all your possibilities, and what you can do. There are many things you can do, some of them important, but not urgent. Some of them urgent, but not important. But the thing that brings priority, the one you want to concentrate and focus on, this change that we need, otherwise, a community will collapse. 
Otherwise, there will be no leadership anymore. The people you want, they have their reasons. They say they should not be this, it should not be. They don't mind if they destroy even the whole community so that, okay, uh, nobody will eat. You understand? Now, I don't mean eating breakfast. Nobody will eat anything. We will not eat. They will not eat. Therefore, scatter everything. This is the time you need priority. And you say, this will be my focus. This will be my attention. And so you come out. You don't bury yourself in your local church. You don't bury yourself in your local mosque. You don't bury yourself in under any cocoon. You say, now I have a priority. And the Lord will back you up. Amen. And God will support you. And we're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 24. Acts, chapter 20, verse 24. It says, but none of these things... Move me. It is the man that said, I have a plan, I have a goal, I have a purpose. This will be done in my time. Through my commitment, this will be done. And then opposition rose from there and from there. And plans of people get him down, get rid of him, came from there. And from there, oppose him, persecute him, talk against him, criticize him. Many things you might hear you never heard before until you rise up to be a change maker. And he says, if I succumb, if I surrender, if I give up, nothing will be done. And so he said, Brethren, I hear all things. I hear many things. I sense many things. He wants to convert us to his whatever. I hear. He wants to organize the people so that he can be this kind of visible leader. I hear, but none of these things move me. Give me a good amen. amen. When nothing moves you. When criticism does not move you. When compliments do not move you. Because they think if we give him com um, you know, compliments, you know we respect him already. He doesn't have to you know, run here, run there. Already you've got it, you've got the honor, you've got the exaltation. Compliments will not even move you. Criticism will not move you. Give a good amen now. Yeah. And then, whether it's coming from the right hand side, coming from the left hand side, coming from below, coming from anywhere, these, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto me. What does that mean? He said, my heart, my life is in the hands of God. It is a verse of scripture that says you are in Christ. Christ is in God. It's like you have a big envelope. You have a smaller envelope. And then you, the treasured man, you are inside a small envelope. Before they can get to this treasured man, I'm talking about you, they have to get to the outside, outer envelope. Before they can get to you, they have to get to the other, the smaller envelope. And then they get you, but they cannot get at God. They cannot destroy God. They cannot force, fall. They, they cannot uh, kind of destroy the purpose and the plan of God. And so you are in Christ and Christ is in God. And so I'm not thinking, you are not thinking, they will, they will, they will. Nobody can do anything without God's permission. You didn't say a good amen then. 
God has a plan, a purpose, and he puts much of that plan and purpose in you, the change maker. He says, I want my world to be like this, my earth to be like, my creation to be like this. And he puts the challenge, the commission in your hand. And he says, go do it. While you're doing it, while you're going, is watching over your life. Why? Because if not, what he intended to do will not be done. And he has chosen you. I am a chosen man. I am a chosen man. And he has put what he takes in your heart, in your life. Therefore, you're not worried about your life anymore. It's protected and preserved. That I might, I might pursue, I might do and finish the course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. That's what God had given him and he knew that as long as he stayed on that path, a change maker, a change model that other people will say he is running. We're running after him. We're running with him. Some of you will even run beyond him. Hmm? Yeah. Number two then is the priority and the virtue. The virtue of a person that is standing like the rock of Gibraltar. And no wind will move him. And no comment will move him. And no commendation or condemnation will move him. And he has that virtue. And he's moving on and moving on. And we will get there. So now later, we'll examine that area, that area, that area. And then we'll mark it. He changes up on there. In that office, he changes up on there. In that corporation, a change has happened there. In that community, look at that. A change has happened there. Because we have the change makers that follow the change model. Number three here. Number three, we're looking at the, pro the proficiency and visibility of a proof producing change mentor. A proof producing change change mentor now the person i bring up now is a different person this is joseph and you know the story of joseph he was sold as a slave to into egypt so that forget about him as a dream i have a dream i have a dreamer Forget about him. The first plan was to kill the dreamer. Here comes the dreamer. Let's kill him. Get rid of him. And we'll know what becomes of the dream. When the dreamer is killed, then the dreamer is gone. Now, people don't only kill with uh, instruments or whatever that takes your life. When they make your life without purpose, without power, without progress, without any pursuit, and you're just there, all your heart is taking away, the courage is taking away, and the power, the passion to do what needs to be done is gone. That man is a living corpse. is dead while living. But Joseph could not receive them. He didn't have the power. And he sold him to Potiphar's house. In Potiphar's house, for a time, he appeared to be doing well. Until somebody, the wife of Potiphar, came and said, Come do this. And Joseph said, no, I can't do that. Why? There are things dreamers do not do. They try to kill my dream. They cannot succeed. But if I kill my dream myself, 
I'll succeed in killing the dreamer and killing the dreamer. Dreamers, don't do that. I will not. If you find people who act like this, like this, they're not dreamers. They don't have any dream. And they're thinking, if I don't succumb, this woman will do something. I'm gone. But Joseph knew better. From today, I know better. I know better. You see, the problem with people, they're not looking at the future, they're looking at the present. At the present, who am I? A man, a slave boy with no voice, with no value. I'm just serving here. And all I can expect, I get from here. But Joseph was looking at the future. Raise up your heads. Look at the future. Because a brighter future than the present situation is coming your way. Yeah. And so eventually, with the big light torch, he didn't have any, any chance, any possibility of getting a lawyer who will see. You couldn't have the services of a good lawyer, of anybody. And so he was sent to the prison. Don't question all that past from the place of Potiphar to the prison in the land. All that play, all that is to the path of fulfillment of your dream. Yeah. We'll soon see you on the other side. Yeah. And then the people in the prison, two of them are dreams. And you know, you understand? Dream of the control of the life of Joseph. And so you said, Well, you said, what's the problem with you? They said, We have. A dream. Nobody to interpret. He said, tell me. They told him he interpreted their dreams. He kept on doing good to people. Even though he was in a place, his mind might be questioning him. How could you be here? Why are you here? Keep on doing good. In the morning, keep on doing good. In the afternoon, keep on doing good. When you are misunderstood and you are incarcerated keep on doing good when you think look at where i am this is not the place i should be keep on doing good every good you do is like a seed that is sown it will germinate it will produce <laughs> you are not sure and eventually they were released one or taking care of, as Joseph had said. The other one promoted, as Joseph had said. And they forgot him. No remembrance. He was still there in the prison. And you might be wondering, how am I still here? Look at the good I did to that man. And I said, when you get back to your position, talk about me. Remember me. When things become good for you. And, they for, and he forgot him. Joseph, what do you think? Joseph said, don't worry. Tell your people, it's not my time yet. But my time will come. Amen. My time will come. Amen. What if Joseph had been released the following day that that person, the butler, that he came back to Pharaoh's palace and he spoke about Joseph. Joseph, you are released. Thank you very much. Where do I go from here? He cannot return to Potiphar's house. He cannot live in Pharaoh's palace. It'll just be in the open like that. Even the food he had in the prison, he cannot carry the prison food with him. The accommodation he had, he cannot carry with him. God was making plans for him. God is making plans for you. Yeah. Two years now, and Pharaoh had a dream. Do you see? Do you see? When God makes you a dreamer, 
a dream interpreter. And when God has given you this, when your time comes, you'll be the only person in the community to be able to do what others cannot do. And so Pharaoh told the dream to this his servant. Oh, and he said, I remember my partner. Uh, there is a slave captive in the prison over there. Where we were, that man is a specialist in interpreting dreams. Call him. And they called him. The time will come in your life, they will call you. Yeah. You are the problem solver. And you are the one that will take the stress and the depression away from the mind of the king. And then uh, after that, he appeared. And then the, the king, Pharaoh, told him uh, the dream. He said there are two. One, he related it. Second, he related it. And without Joseph saying, give me time. No. There's no time. This one is urgent. I must have interpretation now. And the God of heaven who gave the dream, he also gave the knowledge to bring out the revelation in Joseph. And he just opened his mouth. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. I said, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. And he didn't know how the next word will come. The next word came. The next word came. And Pharaoh said, can we find such a man as this? Then he said, you know what, Joseph? You are not a prisoner anymore. I am not a prisoner anymore. Your words will not be imprisoned anymore. Your wealth will not be imprisoned anymore. Your wisdom will not be imprisoned anymore. He lifted him up and he said, Now I make you the second in command, even above Potiphar, even above Potiphar's wife. And eventually, they said, that thing you have said, that in the years of plenty, we shall gather, go, and you will do the gathering. He became the administrator. He became the manager. He controlled everybody. And as Pharaoh saw what was going on, he said, Joseph, there's another assignment. All my senators in the nation of Egypt come. You will be their teacher. You will be their mentor. You'll be the one telling them, go here, go there. God is about to do that again. Yeah. You are now the chosen man. Yeah. A change maker. Yeah. A change model. Yeah. A change mentor. Eventually, the famine affected all the other nations. And where his father and his uh, brothers were, the famine affected them. But they began to hear news. 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 Did, did you ever hear news on the radio about you? Well, we'll hear the news about you. We cannot hide a change maker forever and ever will hear the news. And they heard the news and all his brothers, except the last one, Benjamin, came. They didn't recognize him. Why? They thought he had died. But no, you cannot die before you fulfill the dream. And so they said, sir, they said, your excellency, they said, your majesty, they prostrated. In their culture, whatever they did to know that we are your subjects, that's what they did. He gave them food, he returned their money. The dream has been fulfilled. But he kept one of them. He said because his father was not there. Benjamin, the brother, was not there. He wanted them to bring the father and the last brother. 
because of that, he needed to do something so that they must come back. They will come back to you. Yeah. And so they changed him. And they got back home. And they said, the man there who is in charge, who is that man? No, 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 I'm not talking of history. I'm talking of today. Who is that man? The man who is in church said, We shall bring Benjamin. What? Joseph is gone? No, daddy, Joseph is not gone. Joseph is still here. And the Joseph that had the dream is now in the process of getting the dream fulfilled. And so he said, Okay, take him. And he got there. And Joseph eventually said, I am your brother Joseph. I am. I am. I'm not forgotten. I am. I'm not dead. I am. I'm not in the dungeon. I am. I'm not of the Ishmaelites who sold me to. I am. I'm not in Potiphar's house. I am now here. Where are you? You are here. Up. Oh, you'll be there in Jesus' name. Go call my father. And he sent chariots some food. And when the father saw that, the father said, Joseph, my son, is still alive. Your father will become proud of you. Your mother will become proud of you. And they all came. And that's where they became a mighty nation. You will de do this nation proud. Amen. Through your strength, through your concentration, and through your involvement, this nation will become greater than it has been. We we'll remember the years before independence. We we'll remember the year of independence. We remember years immediately following independence. Look at where we were. One naira equal to one pound. One naira equal to two dollars. We remember. But now, look at it. We will come back. And you are the change agent. Your life is changed. Your family is changed. Your outlook is changed. Your priority is changed. And now the dream of a better nation is hanging from God's permission, hanging on you. I can. I will. I must. It will happen. Amen. Rise up and dedicate yourself to the Lord. Your time has come. The dream of the change maker will be fulfilled, must be fulfilled. All it takes for it to happen, the Lord will do it in your life and through your life. In your life and through your life. Amen. Your dream will not perish. The dream will not perish. Father, Almighty God, we well, thank you. Make us men of purpose. That we have the purpose and the vision. And Lord, we pray for well, that will be men of purpose priority and virtue. And Lord, we pray, we'll become proof producers and we'll become people that bring all our resources, all our intelligence, everything we have on the table. And Lord, through us, through each one there, each one here, and all of us together, change our nation for the better. Amen. We'll see it happening. We accept it happening. Amen. We confirm it will happen. Amen. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you and God bless you.